everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to part two of the math of yarn dyeing. In this video we will be mixing dye stocks, dyeing different mini skeins at different depths of shade or DOS, and showing some of the calculations and how I went from uh, my stock solution concentration to the number of milliliters that I would need for each of these colors. So I hope that this will be really helpful. Um, we're gonna create some really fun gradient sets and yeah, I think it's gonna be great. <laughs> I would like to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this series, Lisa. I was initially gonna just do this as one video, but my introduction to all of the math and formulas was starting to get a bit verbose. And so I decided it would be easier to have it split into two parts. So if you wanna hear me talk a little more in depth about uh, how you might do sample ca calculations, uh, go check out part one of this series. Today, we are gonna dye 10 different 20 gram mini skeins. These are the Platinum Sock Yarn from Wool to Dye For and our 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. We are going to do two different gradient sets of five mini skeins and we'll be mixing two stock solutions at different concentrations so we can look at color levels on multiple different levels. Sure! <laughs> As we get started, we are gonna mix a 1% stock solution of Dharma True Black and a 2% stock solution of Dharma Silver Gray. Now, in general, black is way more potent than gray. And so I'm curious as we do, um, as we dye these different DOS or depths of shade from 0.5% to 4% in these two colors, one of which the black is a very saturated color and the other one is a more, the silver gray is a more medium tone. Will we see some overlap in between these or what? Um, and so I think that it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go start mixing. Whenever you are dealing with dye powders, your personal safety is important. Um, so I always wear nitrile gloves. I'll wear this respirator or some kind of dust mask so I don't inhale anything. And I also wear some eye goggles just in case um, and to drop anything or anything's to splatter. So for a reminder is that when we say our stock solution is a given percentage, we're talking about the grams of dye per 100 milliliters. So a 1% stock solution would be one gram of dye per 100 milliliters. And our 2% stock solution is two grams of dye per 100 milliliters. When we're making our stock solutions, we want the final concentration um, for the 1% to be one gram of dye in 100 milliliters. And since we want a 500 milliliter total volume, we need five grams of dye of the true black. And similarly, since we want two grams of dye per 100 milliliters, for our 500 milliliter stock solution, we need 10 grams of the silver gray dye. We are gonna start by mixing two different stock solutions of Dharma True Black and Silver Gray. And in order to do this, you will want a scale that can weigh out small weights. Um, I'll have links to all of the equipment I'm using in the video description. You will also need some way to measure the volume of the liquid you are mixing. Um, previously, I would just do this approximately using um, the, the 500 milliliter or liter markings on a Pyrex cup, but you can also use something like a graduated cylinder um, or beaker if you want to have slightly more accurate measurements. For our 1% stock solution today, we are going to make a 500 milliliter stock solution. So that means that we need about five grams of dye. And for 500 milliliters of a 2% stock solution, we are gonna need 10 grams of dye. Carefully weighing it out, approximate. Now, technically, you don't wanna just measure 500 milliliters of water and use that to dissolve it. There is some volume in the dye itself, so 
um, you'll want the total volume of your solution to be 500 milliliters. I am going to now add a little bit of warm tap water um, so that way we can create a little slurry and make sure all the dye is wet, which will make it easier to dissolve. If I haven't pointed out already, everything I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment and none of it is ever used for food. And slowly adding a little more water at a time, we will keep mixing this until all of our dye is dissolved. A lot of mixing and pouring back and forth. Bring the final volume up to 500 milliliters. Now, it would probably be better to mix this in say 250 and then increase the volume so that way we could rinse out the container, but let's transfer this to a stock bottle. speaker is actually pouring in really nicely. But the good thing is that when you look here you can see how well mixed it was because we're not really getting residue at the end. Now we can mix the other one. The black was actually a lot easier to mix than the silver gray, maybe because it's a 1% stock solution versus a 2% stock solution. I'm not sure. but. You know, you can see that there's some black left behind, but it is a well-mixed stock. And now we can start measuring out dyes for our different dilutions. I pre-soaked the mini skeins in just some plain tap water for at least an hour before we got started mixing up our dye. The other percentage you see when you talk about yarn dyeing is the DOS, or depth of shade, and the OWG on weight of goods. And both of these numbers refer to the grams of dye that you use per 100 grams of fiber. And so using these two different um, numbers, we can determine how much dye we will need at a given concentration um, to get the, the depth of shade that we want. So a lower DOS is a paler color and a higher DOS is a more saturated color. Today we are going to be dyeing 20 gram mini skeins, but I thought it would be worthwhile to take a look at some of the numbers if we were going to dye a full 100 gram skein. So if we wanted a 1% depth of shade, that means we need 1 gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. If we look at our 1% stock solution, for 1 gram we need 100 milliliters because it's, that's the way it's defined. And the same thing with our 2% stock solution, um, you only need 50 milliliters to get that one gram because our 2% stock solution has two grams per 100 milliliters. And so if you start sort of with the easiest, the 1% calculation, um, if you want a 2% depth of shade, you need twice as much dye per 100 grams, you need two grams. And then correspondingly, you need either 200 milliliters or 100 milliliters. And I've done this out for the five different depths of shade that we will be looking at today. How did I calculate the number of milliliters I needed of our stock solution? You take your depth of shade, divided by your stock solution concentration, and then you multiply by the number of grams of fiber that you have. So if we had our desired depth of shade of 1% and we had a stock solution of 1% and we wanted to use 100 grams of fiber, then we would have, um, you know, we would need 100 milliliters of our dye. And if we had, um, uh, you know, we wanted the 1% DOS and our stock solution was 2 grams of dye per 100 milliliters times 100 grams of fiber, that would give us 50 milliliters of our dye stock that we would need. Again, I'm happy to run through more of these calculations. I didn't bother adding some 100s in here to account from converting, I guess, back from the percent to the decimal because all of those would end up counting canceling out because we're ultimately um, dividing 1% by another percent. But if this seems sort of confusing, 
it's certainly just easier to go back and think, okay, if I want a 4% DOS on 100 grams of fiber, I'm gonna need four gram of dye on those 100 grams. And then it's easier to go from, okay, if I need this many grams of dye, how many milliliters do I need from my different stock solutions? But we're not using 100 gram skeins today, we're using 20 gram mini skeins. And so effectively, all of these volumes that I calculated up here, you just divide them by five because 20 is one fifth of 100. But the kinds of calculations work the exact same way. So if I wanted um, our 2% DOS, um, and I wanted to use our 1% our stock solution on 20 grams of fiber, two times 20 divided by one, that's 40 milliliters of dye. Um, and then if, you know, for the 2% stock solution, um, two times 20 divided by two, 20 milliliters. Today, we are gonna dye five mini skeins at the same time in our dedicated dye pot using these one pint mason jars. A mini skein fits into a jar really nicely and this will speed up the process because you could do them each individually but uh, yeah, five at once seems a bit better. <laughs> now there are a few different ways that we could do this. We could start with you know trying to dilute each of the dyes into 100 milliliters to add in I'm not gonna worry about too much about the total volume of liquid that's in each jar. The most important aspect of this is that, um, is the total amount of dye that goes in versus the total volume of water. I've started off with one cup of water in each of our jars, and we're gonna add one teaspoon of white vinegar in each of them. And just quickly stir them up. I have pre-shaken my 2% stock solution. And so for the 4%, I'm going to measure out 40 milliliters. For the 2%, 20 milliliters. For the 1%, 10 milliliters. For the half percent, 5 milliliters. And then finally, for the 0.25%, 2.5 milliliters. And for stirring these up, I'm going to start with the lightest one and go darker and darker. I think that some of the differences here will really start to show up once we add the mini skeins to the jars. Now, if you have to measure out a really, really tiny volume of dye, like say we needed half of a milliliter, um, at that point, it might be easier to go and make a dilution of your stock solution, so that way you could measure out a larger volume of water. Um, it's much easier to measure out and more accurate to measure out 40 milliliters than it can be to measure out two and a half, especially if we were using the same graduated cylinder the whole time. But as I was going for a smaller and smaller volume, I went down to a you know smaller syringes so that way I could more um, accurately measure uh, the volumes I wanted. Now let's add our mini skeins of yarn into each of our jars and I'm going to use a clean spoon to sort of help make sure things are completely submerged. We will probably get, you know, not a complete solid here um, just because these are a little crowded, but we should get increasingly darker colors on this yarn. Okay, and I wanted to also show this from more of a side view because you can really see 
the difference in how pale our 0.25% is compared to our 4%. I'm not 100% sure of the volume of water that I will need in the dedicated dye pot. Um, clearly, I need more than I had there, um, but I want the water level to be just below the water level of our mason jars. Okay, there we go. You can see that the water level is now higher. I am going to turn this on to high. Um, we are in sort of a double boiler like situation there, um, but our, I didn't mark the jars. This was our 0.25%. Um, here and our four percent over here. Um, so I'm going to start heating things up. I will put a lid on it and I will come and check on it. I don't want it to get to too much of a boil, um, but yeah, I'll come and check on it in about 20 minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. Um, and let's see, the bath is definitely boiling. I'm not sure about the little containers, but I do see a nice little gradient going on. There's a lot of steam, so let me just turn it down for a moment. But look how cute, look how cute. Starting with our lightest one, looking to see, okay, that one looks like it's cleared. Same with the second. The third is looking pretty good. The fourth still is a little cloudy. And how about our darkest one? Oh, that's actually also looking rather good. So it looks like the dye is, um, if not cleared, close to clearing from all of these. Again, like, you know, we definitely have tonal yarn here. This isn't. Um, a solid, I probably could have increased our um, water volume in each of these more, but yeah, there's no question that we got a big difference between the palest and darkest shades. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat, um, but I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to let this sit another 20 minutes before we try to remove our yarn and get a look at the colors. The yarns themselves are not marked, but I am sort of trusting that I'm gonna be able to tell the difference between our 0.25% and 4% depth of shade yarns. Yeah, the, the difference between some of these might be real subtle, um, but I think there's no question that we've got a nice tonal gradient of grays going on here. I think one of the things that's most interesting to me is that even at the 4%, it is still very much a gray. It is not black here. Looking at the empty jars, there's maybe a tinge of color in the 4% one, but overall the water has all cleared and I'm gonna go rinse these out so we can do the same thing, but starting with the true black dye. But how is this for a perfect gradient set? I am so curious to see how the 4% to 0.25% of the black will compare to this. You know, where will we see, you know, what will the palest look like? Ooh, I think it'll be fun. Once again, we are starting with one cup of water in each of our mason jars, and I'm adding one teaspoon of white vinegar to each jar so it's acidic enough for us to have the dye bind. All right, so for the 4%, we need 80 milliliters of our 1% stock solution. Then for the 2%, we need 40 milliliters. Then we need 20 milliliters. Then 10 milliliters. And finally, 
five milliliters. And I'm gonna go through and starting with the least concentrated, we will stir all of these up. I thought I was filming and I guess I was not. Um, but I just added the 20 gram mini skeins to each of the jars. One of the things that I wanted to point out here as we are looking at this and to remind you all is that just because um, we had a 2% stock solution of our gray dye does not mean that it's more pigmented. Um, you can see that um, this lightest shade, this 0.25% um, that we've mixed up for the black is already looking as dark as one of the medium or darker shades of the silver gray. So ultimately, we have the exact same amount of dye just of the black in each of these even though they look darker. It's because um, the, like the saturation of color is different from silver gray and true black. And just even from the side, these look oh so pigmented already. I wonder if it's going to take a little bit longer this time for the color to absorb. Um, just because even though the concentrations are the same, there's no question that there's a lot more pigment in each of these jars just because black is way more pigment pigmented than gray. But I'll come back and check in in 20 minutes. Okay, it has been 20 minutes and the palest one is looking like it's clearing. The darkest one also looks like it's potentially clearing even though there is definitely some more dye I think in these darker ones. That one's close. Yeah, so I think now I'm going to turn off the heat and just leave things here in the pot for another 20 minutes. And then I think if the darkest one hasn't cleared, then maybe I'll add more acid to it and maybe add more heat to all of them. But uh, I'll be back in another 20 minutes. Yeah, so it looks like even our darkest one, whoo, that looks black, that the dye bath has cleared. So I'm going to remove these so they can start to cool. Um, and then we'll come back and take the yarn out of them. Okay, let's start by removing the darkest one first. There's a bit of like yellow in there, but ultimately <laughs> that yarn looks real black. So that was the 4%. Here's the 2%, which looks real close actually. Here's the 1%, um, which honestly, it's hard to tell the difference between those three. They're all very, very dark. Now that we're at the 0.5%, that does feel a shade lighter. And then here we are at the 0 0.25, and that one is definitely lighter. Ultimately, we've got a lot of black going on. So in both of these cases, we have the lightest here among the top and the darkest, the deepest near on the bottom. I'd say the 4% charcoal gray is pretty equivalent to the half percent. Um, it's pretty equivalent to the half percent of the black, which just shows how, how seriously much more pigmented it, the grays are, or sorry, the blacks are than the grays. Um, but Altogether, these could actually work in a pretty fun set. Um, you do see the colors did absorb fairly fast. The resist from the ties did make a difference, which I think is good to know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let the black ones cool and we can go and wash the gray. So I feel like when it comes to the grays, it's going to be a little easier for me to tell which one is which. The blacks might be harder. I don't have these different ones labeled. Um, but all of that color is in the yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit of some clear dish soap just to make sure everything is nice and absorbed. But then we are gonna go and hang this up to dry and come back and wash the black. 
All right, now we're gonna wash the blacks. And yeah, it is harder to tell which of the darker ones are which. I don't have these labeled, which might be a mistake, but I guess it'll also just tell us if we how, how much we struggle to tell the difference between 1% and 4% black. Um, it'll be a useful thing to know as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse with the soap, but all that color is in the yarn, so I'm gonna go clean this up, and once everything is dry, we'll come back with some conclusions. You guys, this is so awesome. So unbelievably awesome. And can we just take a moment and think, does it look like I'm filming in grayscale right now? Because we've got these beautiful grays and blacks and it is mwah. In case you couldn't tell, the silver gray dyed yarns are on the left. On the right, we have the true black. And starting at the top, we have the 0.25%, 0.5%, 1%, 2%, and 4% depths of shade. The palest color from the True Black is pretty equivalent to, um, I would say, the 2% DOS from the um, Silver Gray. So I guess this shows why you might want both a black and a gray in your collection, because in order to get the tone of the Silver Gray, you would have to dilute that black really, really far. Now, you definitely could dilute your black dye, the true black, I think, and get the same tones as a silver gray. Um, they look like pretty good, and the, the tones feel very, very similar. Uh, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I'm not sure how well this is gonna read on camera, but you can definitely tell the difference between the 1%, 2% and 4% in the blacks. The 4% is really saturated, really even, and you know, there's a little bit more tonal nature to the 2% and then a little more with the 1%, giving us a beautiful gradient in the blacks as well. While they were wet, I was really concerned that these three shades would look the same, but I think you know, if you want that truest, true, true black, 4% is definitely the way to go. On camera, it might also be a little hard to tell the difference between the lower ends of the silver gray, but the differences are very visible to the eye. I like that the way that the grays almost feel glazed. Like it feels like we didn't get a really deep um, penetration of the color but I think that's partly because we had these 20 gram mini skeins stuffed into the mason jars and only really one cup of liquid per skein. What we did in this video was a true swatch test. Unlike those crude tests where I would just dump some powder on yarn to get a sense of the tone. So if you really want to mix your colors like a pro and get a really good feel for them, I highly recommend taking the time and looking at the various um, color saturation you can get when you use different amounts of dye. Once again, the higher the DOS, the more dye that you used, which is fairly intuitive. But the DOS does not necessarily tell you how saturated the color is overall. Both of these are 4%. and you know, there's just a big difference in the pigmentation of the true black than there is in the silver gray. I would like to give a huge, huge thank you to our sponsor, Lisa, who reached out and asked if she could sponsor a video with the math of yarn dyeing. And I really just wanted to show how you can use these different numbers to achieve specific shades. And from this, now we know if we really, really want that truest black, go for the 4%. And you can get a really nice charcoal gray if you bump that up to the 4%. Um, but if you want to start getting a more gray with the black, you're going to need to dilute it really, really far. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what concentration you mix your stock. 
you could do a 2.5% stock solution if the dyes will dissolve. It'll just make a difference if you're doing other calculations down the road. So as long as you mix and prepare your stock solutions in a consistent way, you should be able to achieve consistent colors. Now, that being said, I still am really in favor of just going for it. However, if you want to make recipes that are reproducible, then I recommend making consistent stock solutions and measuring and sort of keeping track of how many grams of dye you're using to achieve that specific color on a specific weight of yarn. If you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, getting shout outs in the video, and then receiving 100 or 200 grams of yarn from the video, um, check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Normally, sponsorships are a fun way to get custom mystery surprise yarn, I will avoid colors you don't like, and design a video with you in mind. But if you have a specific idea, feel free to reach out to me on Etsy before you purchase the listing, and we can discuss if it is a possibility that aligns itself with my uh, Dye Pot Weekly filming schedule. Even without sponsoring an episode, you can always feel free to leave a comment with the videos that you want to see the most. I have a list of a couple hundred ideas for videos, so I can't promise that you know your request will make it to the top of the list, but I absolutely keep track of all the requests that I receive, and it really does influence um, the ultimately the videos that I create. Make sure that you check out the rest of the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn that have been featured in all of these videos. So you can bring yarn home and then as you're knitting, crocheting, weaving, uh, doing whatever you want to do with the yarn, you can watch me dye it all over again. And if I need to clarify anything or if it would be helpful for me to sort of longhand write out some of these calculations and show sort of how I went from one thing to the next, please let me know below. Um, I hope that, goodness, I hope that I wasn't misspeaking anywhere and that I could try to make this as clear as possible. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.